What's up, everyone? Welcome to the March 25th edition of uh, FanDuel Tournament Plays presented by Prize Picks. I'm your host, Adam Scherer. You can follow me on Twitter at ShipMyMoneyDFS. And as a reminder, you get one free month of Awesomeo Plus Platinum when you sign up and make a deposit at Prize Picks. Be sure to use the code Awesomeo to receive a 100% first deposit bonus up to $100. Today, we have a seven game NBA slate, but it is, at least right now, the exact opposite of what we had on yesterday's five-game slate. We had an abundance of value, very obvious plays yesterday. Not that much value right now. Uh, we do have plenty of injury news that we are waiting on. So as always, be sure to tune into the Deeper Dive and Live Before Lock uh, in the two hours leading up until tip on the Awesome YouTube channel. But for now, uh, this video, it's more low pro. It's different than yesterday. You know, yesterday it was a lot of these guys are really popular, but they're such good plays that you should play them anyway. Today it's more uh, players that are relatively unlikely to succeed, but that are also low owned and ways that you can differentiate your lineups away from the few players that are going to be really popular. So uh, using the boom bust tool on the awesome.com website, going to take a look at five of the top tournament options on tonight's slate for FanDuel, starting at number five, Jordan Clarkson, $6,000 point guard and shooting guard eligible. He's projected for about 6% ownership with an 11% chance of being in the optimal lineup. The Jazz have a favorable matchup against the Charlotte Hornets. Clarkson has averaged 0.94 FanDuel points per minute this season, and Boyan Bogdanovich is out once again for Utah. Bogdanovich doesn't have the same level of impact on Clarkson that somebody like Conley or even more so Donovan Mitchell being out would, but it does make it more likely that Clarkson is in the closing lineup if this game's competitive. In Utah's last game, which was a blowout loss to Boston, you got about 26 minutes from Clarkson, but in the last competitive game they played, which was two games ago against, I believe, Brooklyn, you got 37 or 38 minutes from Clarkson. Not to say that he's guaranteed to get that many minutes if this game's competitive, but it's certainly on the table, and you don't actually need that for him to pay off a 6K price tag. Number four, Alperin Shangun, $5,200, point uh, power forward and center eligible. $5,200 is a relatively expensive price tag for Shangun, but he's only projected for 8% ownership. He has a 12% chance of being in the optimal lineup, and he has a fantastic matchup tonight against the Portland Trailblazers in a couple of different ways. For one, the Blazers are really bad, and there should just be a lot of fantasy points to go around in this game from a combination of bad Portland defense, bad Portland shooters, a lot of missed shots, rebounds opportunities, all of that. But also, we've been seeing Houston play Shangun alongside Christian Wood a bit more recently, which is something they've been back and forth on this season, sometimes doing it, sometimes not. But Portland typically starts Drew Eubanks alongside Trendon Watford. Now, Watford's not a traditional center, but he is a big. He's like 6'8". They, they've used him at center uh, plenty this year. And there's no reason to think that's not going to be the starting lineup again tonight. So you can easily see plenty of lineups where, or plenty of minutes rather, where Shangun and Wood are sharing the floor against some combination of Eubanks, Greg Brown, Trendon Watford, um, whoever else Portland plays at center. I'm, I'm drawing blanks on the rest of their front court. But the uh, point being, they run relatively, not, not big in the sense of like they have traditional bigs, but big in the sense of they have like a weirdly big four and then a smallish five. Um, Long story short, I think Shangun gets plenty of minutes alongside Wood. And then, of course, if Wood gets in foul trouble, if this game blows out, if Houston's second unit plays well, you know, any of those things happen, you're getting even more run for Shangun, who's averaged 1.14 Fanduel points per minute this season. Andrew Wiggins comes in at number three, $6,400, small forward only, projected for 8% ownership with a 12% chance of being in the optimal lineup. Wiggins has averaged 0.91 FanDuel points per minute without Stephen Curry on the floor this year. He has a decent matchup against Atlanta. And the thing is, even if you know Wiggins still hasn't on average put up great fantasy numbers without Curry, just given the fact he's likely to play 34, 35 minutes at a $6,400 price tag, it makes him project reasonably well. And without Curry, there is just a greater chance that Wiggins happens to take over a game. He still has to compete with Clay Thompson for touches. He still has to compete with Jordan Poole. And he is third behind those guys. But they're still more likely to give way to him if he's shooting well, if he's playing well, than someone like Curry is. Number two, LaMelo Ball, $8,900 point guard, projected for 9% ownership with a 13% chance of being in the optimal lineup. He has a difficult matchup tonight against the Utah Jazz, but he is reasonably priced, and he has averaged 1.3 FanDuel points per minute in the games he's played without Gordon Hayward this year. In those games, he's also averaged 32.9 minutes per game, but there is volatility in his playing time. Um, sometimes you see him play 30 minutes, even when he's not in foul trouble, which is really frustrating, but other times he can get the 37 or 38 minutes like he did last game. We've seen him play a bit more recently, which is nice as well. Certainly not an easy matchup, but if it were an easy matchup, his ownership would be coming in at higher than 9%. And number one, Clay Thompson, only $6,600. 
He's shooting guard only, projected for about 10% ownership with a 14% chance of being in the optimal lineup. In a limited sample without Curry on the floor this year, Thompson has averaged 1.08 FanDuel points per minute and 26.6 minutes per game, but, or sorry, 26.6% usage rate. Uh, His playing time is up recently, though. We're not seeing him on a minutes restriction. He gave us 38 minutes a couple of games ago, played 32 last game. Um, so I expect him to be in you know the 32 to 34 minute range on average, but could certainly play more. And it's just a little bit underpriced here. So to recap, the top five tournament options on FanDuel: number five, Jordan Clarkson; number four, Alperin Shangun; number three, Andrew Wiggins; number two, Lamelo Ball; and number one, Clay Thompson.